Let's give you some hard productivity tools that I think are going to give you some great value. The SMART tool. This is standard business 101. Specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time-based. You know, big violation point, people tend to put intangible, non-specific goals in place. I mentioned this earlier. Not so they can succeed, but so they beat themselves up. I love these kind of clients because they come in and if in their MOW, like, I want to be more financially successful this year, I'm like, great, I pull a dollar out of my pocket, here's a dollar you didn't have. You're more financially successful. I've just successfully, you know, given you the program, give me all my money, see you later. No, 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 wait, I didn't want that, I want more than that. Well, be very specific. And then sometimes, like an intangible of working on your marriage, you've got to turn it into specific. I'm going to go on date nights. I'm going to write love letters. I'm going to find, you know, once a month, very unique dates we've never done. And then I will assess, is the marriage improving or not? You're now putting it to specific. It's something that you can measure. You know, if you're doing something non-specific, generally it's hard to measure. Sometimes if you're doing specific, you then still have to put in the psychology and you have to put in the action to measure it. Making it actionable, it means that I can actually do this. Uh, now, I will allow, this is very masculine. Uh, there is more a feminine state of being. If anybody wants to challenge this or know more about this, it's other content and, and other stuff. I'll make that available to you guys, though, in this program. But for the most part, this group is an action-based group. You, you want to create something that you can act on. It's realistic, and, and I always emphasize in new software, and it's time-based. And when you put time in, it now allows us to do the goals versus outcomes. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is do you schedule? I cannot tell you the biggest swings and misses that people put great plans in place and they even have interim plans and, and sub plans and sub 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 plans. You have to put these on calendars. If you do not, one, you're violating the time element because in order to do it by a certain time, you got to do it by a certain time, so you better schedule the time to do it. If it's just on some to-do list, then it's based on the vagaries of whether you get your to-do list done or not. And generally, most people have a to-do list that's way too big. And as a consequence, the J-O-B crap is always moving up and the personal stuff is always deprioritized and moving down. So to take the activity and actually schedule it, that's why my calendar I schedule in 15 minute increments. And generally in my plan, if something is a, you know, 15 minute or less, activity, then I'll schedule three of them in that time block. And if it's 45 minutes, then I take up three time blocks. And then I'm constantly assessing. If I overscheduled, why? What, what did I do wrong? Am I getting better faster? If I underscheduled, why? Is it harder? Wasn't I prepared? I didn't put the preparation in. I needed to put prep in a time block so that at the end of the day you're not always just left with this giant to-do list that's too big you get some of it done but you you don't get all of it done and you never feel good about yourself the real self-discipline you know and, and your child is looking at you as you do this you want to have the ability to to win to create the success you're looking for if all you have is three things on your calendar today you know, and then you succeed and you have time left over, great, because a month from now you got five. And the five might be two main, but might end up now as you're getting better to be three sub-items. So scheduling your greatness 
on a calendar, I cannot emphasize enough. Now, I've included something called the Timeline Tool. It actually comes out of the formula. You can use this both on an item specific. You can use this on an kind of overall basis. So it, it might be, you know, something health related. It might be something, you know, workout very specific related. Or it might just be something that you want to focus on. Now, in the formula, it talks about are you asking or are you focused on what you don't want. That's what gives you the 1 to 10 emotional intensity. Notice this is not a negative 10. It's not that the intensity, I tell you very clearly in the formula, you know, you're really, really happy, that's a 10. You're really, really angry, that's a 0 or minus 10. No, it's the intensity of, and it's the time. So if you start out focused on something, now let's say we wanted to, uh, you know, think about, you know, this great attitude that we want related to our business model, the new business model that we're doing. And we've got work to do today and we've got um, we've got some scheduled block time where we've got some tasks that we have to do we start out on time these can be one hour increments these can be five minute increments these can be fit there can be anything you want it's a general form and if you start off and let's say okay eight o'clock kicks off the day I might spend 30 seconds going, you know, I'm epic, I'm awesome, I love what my day is going to be, I can't wait to get this done, and then now I have to go off and focus on the job, I'm not putting in emotional intensity into this. And let's say the job runs over, and now I'm actually pissed off about the fact that I didn't get to something, and I'm really upset. You know, I go off to lunch and no, I, I'm going to go tell my friend how angry I am. So I don't even get, I don't even get credit for that line. So I erase that. You know, now I come back after lunch. I'm like, no, I'm going to get something positive done. I'm going to work on this project for a little bit. I got that done. You know, I got to go back. But, you know, the afternoon is getting busy. So no, I'm going to get really excited. Even in this just really, just really I'm going to really run the emotional intensity of them. We get really, really excited about this. And then I got to get some day job done. And then I got some more done. And then I got, you know, my spouse called. And I'm even going to tell them how, how awesome I am versus another day. You know, you start off positive. You go to work. But, you know, maybe you, you don't come back to lunch. You don't get that. You just stay you know, just low-level grouchy. You know, work even now pisses you off and you're like, why do I even want to do that job? Why, why do I want to do this apartment? You know, blah, blah, blah. You can track. You can look at the triggers. You can look at the software that's running. And you can look at when it flips. And you can plan for tomorrow to be better because you've got true visibility into what's going on. This is a great analytical tool for keeping track of how things are progressing. Uh, and then the last tool I want to cover, the plan execution tool, really, really important tool. There's a lot of things that I do that follows quadrant theory, this being one of them. In order to be great, you're going to have a plan for that greatness and you're going to execute that plan. So on this axis, if we've got a really shitty no plan, poor plan, very low, zero level plan, all the way up to here, we've got an amazing, impeccable, precise, detailed, awesome plan. We also have, uh, you know, we do zero execution. We're doing it very poorly. We're barely working on it all the way up to perfect execution. We now have four quadrants that we can look at. When you're at the zero, zero quadrant, low on planning, 
low on execution. It's awful. You get nothing. You got no plan or a poor plan. You know, you guys, you know, you're not here. This, this is not who this group in Mastermind tends to be. You know them at work. You've seen them. But here's what's interesting. On this quadrant, if you have a poor plan because you're here, but high execution because you're here, you get something. And we tend to see these people, these are the doers. These are the go-getters. Now, they tend to make a lot of mistakes. They tend to waste time or waste resources because they're doing something and they didn't plan it out. But hey, they console themselves with the fact that, hey, we're doing something. We're doing something versus someone who is sitting right here with poor execution, but an awesome, awesome plan. You know, great plan, great list, well organized. And they're constantly going back and redoing their to-do list and reorganizing and very getting very little done. You know, this actually feels good. People look at them. They actually like them. You know, they, they try to marry them sometimes to those individuals so that you're not wasting stuff. But you really don't get a whole lot done. It's only in the great plan, great execution quadrant that you, you get what you're doing. So why is this a productivity tool? Because it's an analysis of how and why you succeed or fail. So in the homework of, you know, running a timeline, you know, looking at the emotional intensity, which is doing the neural wiring for your success, you know, and now you come along and you look at what you have when you connive this, which is a tool, meaning what's awesome on the days and items that you're doing really, really well, you can see and know how you did it, why you were successful. And on the days and the items when you're less than, when, when you're not, you can see that too. And you can make according changes.